Hello, this is MakerJ11, and I'm going to be starting a new video series of building an internal combustion engine without a machine shop. Because you like that other one so much, where I built it an engine out of copper pipe and a JB Weld piston, and it worked really well. So what we're going to be doing is taking this compressor, which is just commonly found in refrigerators and things like that, and we're going to be taking it apart and trying to turn it into an internal combustion engine. Because this thing already has a very nice piston in it, potentially a very nice flywheel. So pretty much everything is already there. All we need to do is modify it a little bit, aka hacking it, to do what we want it to do, which is what it was not designed to do, but I think we can make it do it. So we can make this into an internal combustion engine. And we're going to be doing this with very minimal tools. These are the main tools that we're going to be using, at least that I'm going to start out using. It's possible that I might not be able to do it with these tools and I might have to break out the angle grinder or something like that. But here we've got an assortment of different things that I'm planning to definitely use quite a bit on this project. Uh, JB Weld, obviously, power drill, uh, hacksaw, uh, drill bits, and different things like that. So these are the tools we're going to start with and we'll see how far we can get along with the project with just these tools. Obviously, I will let you know if I use any other tools, but we're try gonna try not to use Dremel tool, we're gonna try not to solder too much stuff, um, because I know that's hard for a lot of people. All right, so before we get started, there's a few things I want you guys to know. One is if you don't actually know how an internal combustion engine works, um, you probably wanna figure that out before you even think about attempting this project. I highly recommend going and reading the whole Wikipedia page on internal combustion engines because that is very informative and just watch lots of videos, how they work, and you should be able to figure it out eventually. But yeah, you definitely want to understand fully how a two-stroke, four-stroke, all different types of internal combustion works before you even attempt this project because it's quite in-depth. So when you're doing a lot of manual labor like hacksawing, you want to have the right blade. So you want to have a good quality one. Something like this, where you're using cutting fairly thick steel, you want a low TPI, so about 18 is pretty good. So this is a good blade for this type of work. So it'll make it a lot easier, it'll be a lot more efficient. So I think we're just gonna go straight for cutting this pretty much in half. Um, I think that'll just be the easiest method. Draining the oil out of the compressor so we can cut the other half open. So far the cutting is going pretty good. One hour later. All right, so we've cut all the way around. Took about an hour to do it, a lot of work, but it's quite possible. No angle grinder, nothing, no power tools. Just a good hacksaw blade and a bit of muscle. Now the plan is to just try to bust the top off with a sledgehammer. Perfect, look at that, it just pops right off. Boy, this steel is pretty thick. It's probably almost, eh, not quite a quarter inch, at least an eighth inch thick. It's fairly beefy. Um, but as you can see, the whole compressor assembly is actually on springs. So there's three springs here that it's all, um, that's pretty much all that's supporting it. And then this this is the discharge tube, so the high pressure. So what happens with the compressor? The low pressure gas comes in here, um, and then the compressor basically just compresses it. So, and then it discharges it through this small line here. And so in order to make a good connection there that won't break, they have this coiled copper tube here that can, so that the compressor can vibrate a whole lot because it's, so that it's quieter, basically. So this is the head right here. We've probably got valves underneath of these compartments here. Not entirely sure, but um, some type of valves or something. You can see there's the bottom of the connecting rod, or the uh, this is the cam here. So you can you can actually hear the valves opening and closing. It rotates nice and smooth actually. So. I like the looks of this. It's not a very big piston. It's only about three quarter inch, but it should be big enough. So let's um, let's cut these springs or somehow get this out of here. Not exactly how sure how they got those springs in there, but mm -hmm. 
All right, that's those out. Now there's a way to get it out. And there it is. All right. So these are our windings, our field windings. So we've got run and start windings, and that's why there's three wires here. Here's our crank and the large end, and then we've got a little counterweight. Discharge coil, we've probably got some check valves underneath of here. Um, this is our cylinder head. This is actually an oil pump. Kind of works like a centrifuge, I suppose you could say. So this sits down into the oil in the bottom, and as this spins, it kind of slings the oil up because the oil wants to sling out. So this is larger here, so it kind of acts as a pump. And that gets oil up into uh, these bearings up here. So these are just kind of, it's just cast iron on cast iron, it looks like. All right, so that's the field windings off. So honestly, I think this would probably do as a flywheel. So we probably don't really need to make a bigger flywheel than that. That's a fairly decent chunk of metal right there. Hopefully that'll be enough. Hmm. Yeah, so it's just kind of a chamber. Nothing really that special. And that one is also just a chamber. There's just a little hole that goes through there. Huh, that's odd. Not sure, must just be kind of like a reservoir. Huh. So those are kind of the same thing. They're just kind of like reservoirs. All right, so there's the head off. So, okay. This is the head, or the check valves. So this is the intake check valve. So when the piston is coming down, because this is where the piston is right here, when the piston's going down, creates a vacuum, opens this check valve, which lets gas in, and then the piston goes up and opens this little check valve underneath there. There's a little reed valve. And there's the piston. It looks like it's got about, oh, three quarter inch travel and it's about a one inch diameter piston. I think that's perfectly usable, honestly. We're gonna have to some, somehow fit a spark plug on there. Um, we're gonna need to put some holes in it for ports, which will be quite fun. So I've decided to take the rest of the engine apart as well just for the fun of it so I can see what, I, what I'm working with. See if there's any rings or anything like that. So there you can see I was right, there's a little hole there for the oil to get through. So now I don't actually know how to get the piston out. It looks like you'd actually have to take this guy out. I don't really want to do that. Properly dispose of the oil. Well, this is the end of this video. Now you might be wondering, Joachim, why did you lay everything out so neatly? Well, the answer to that is this is Noling, and this is going on my social medias, Instagram and Facebook. So if you don't follow those already, go ahead and do that. There's links in the description, MakerJ101. And um, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, because it helps me out a lot. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep experimenting. And stay tuned for part two, where I figure out what we're going to do with all these pieces and parts, and figure out how we're going to build an internal combustion engine with this compressor. It's a cute little sound though. It's like, ah! 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 It's kind of amusing. Okay.